welcome to the 18th video for our series of uh, lectures for the course irrigation engineering and hydraulic structure so in previous lecture lecture number 17 we have discussed the design steps for lessees theory okay these were the design steps the first step was to find out the velocity of flow this is the formula the second was mean hydraulic uh, depth and third was area of cross section of canal and then weighted parameter and longitudinal slope or bed slope okay so we have a numerical problem and here we are supposed to design a canal by using uh, glasses theory okay This one is discharge is 40 meter cube per second. So we need to design a, what we are supposed to do. We are supposed to design. Let me choose yellow color to highlight. The first thing we need to do is design a, re a regime canal or a stable canal to carry a discharge of discharge is given to us 40 meter cube of discharge we need to design a canal which can carry discharge of 40 meter cube per second by using Lessig's theory okay we need to use Lessig's theory to design this canal and then we are asked to assume side slope side slope is given side slope of canal is 1 ratio 1 okay the average particle size of the bed is given to us which is 0.88 mm okay let's start to solve the problem and first we will write down the given data what is given to us the first thing given to us is a discharge right discharge which is represented with Q and it is given to us 40 meter cube per second right 40 meter cube per second and next thing given to us is side slope side slope is given to us which is 1 ratio 1 okay this one ratio one means one horizontal to one vertical right one horizontal to one vertical the third thing given to us is size of average size of particle which we represent with D right and this is always in mm 0.8 mm is the particle size this is given to us and we are asked to we need to we need to design we need to design a canal which can carry 40 meter cube per second discharge okay so we need to design a canal which can carry 40 meter cube per second of discharge so let's start with the first step the first step is velocity right before that i need to tell you one thing related to the value of side slope given to us which is 1 ratio 1 right what does this mean this means this means that let me draw a cross section of a canal let's say this is a canal right cross section of the canal and the ratio given to us is 
horizontal to vertical is one ratio one right this is given to us and let's say this distance is b right if this is b then what will be this distance from here to here this distance is going to be b to right this is also b and this distance is equal to x and this distance is also x got it and this is the depth of the canal depth of the canal is from here to here this is the depth of the canal we represent it with d or y okay tell me one thing if the side slope horizontal vertical slopes are equal what does this means this means that like this is the triangle right here is one triangle this is the second triangle so if your slope uh, side slope of horizontal and vertical are equal that means that this side is equal to this side right like we got a triangle like this right this is the triangle and this is x this is d depth right depth d or y if this side slope is one ratio uh, one that means that x and d are equal how we can do it right we can compare it like one divided by one is equal to what is the horizontal and vertical of this x divided by d right when you cross multiply it then it will become x is equal to d so in case if your slope side slope are equal that means that this these sides are also equal to the depth of your canal okay this is depth or y d or y both represents the same thing let's represent it with y, with y because we use d for the size of particle okay So this was the important thing we need to note slope side slope for horizontal and vertical is equal in that case your depth is going to be equal to this distance so let's start the designing phase in the first phase we need to find out the velocity right velocity v so the formula we got to find out the velocity v is what is the formula this is the formula right v is equal to q f square divided by 140 whole raised to the power 1 upon 6 and this is the formula to find f so let's use this formula to find v the formula we got is v is equal to to find velocity we need q discharge right it is given to us already in the question and second thing we need is f square divided by 140 all power 1 by 6 right we need q and f to find out the velocity but we don't have the value of f so for that we need to first find the value of f what is f f we got the formula for f which is f is equal to 1.76 and then under the root t right this d is the size of particle so let's first find the value of f 
1.76 under the root the value of d is 0 0.8 we need to put this in mm so f is going to be f will be equal to 1.57 mm what was f f was the silt factor right this is silt factor we got the silt factor value and we already have q so now we can find the value of v by putting these values in equation number one so equation one will become v is equal to what was the value of q given to us the value of q given to us is 40 meter cube per second right so value of q is 40 meter cube per second and value of f is 1.57 mm we find it here divided by 140 and whole raised to the power 1 by 6 when you solve it using calculator you will get the value of v as 0.943 meter per second in order of velocity okay we, we got the value of velocity right now this let's move to the second step this in second step what we discussed in previous uh, lecture of design step in second step we, we will find the mean hydraulic depth right and for mean hydraulic depth we have two formulas so depending upon the data we got we will use any one of these formulas i think this formula is going to be used because we already have the value of v and f so let's find out hydraulic radius in second step hydraulic radius if the spelling of hydraulic is wrong pardon me we represent it with uh, with r so for uh, to finding the hydraulic radius we got the formula what is the formula to find the hydraulic radius to find the hydraulic radius we got formula r is equal to now uh, let me take it out yeah 5 by 2 multiply by v square divided by f right we got all the values we just need to put those values and find the value of r so our equation will become 5 divided by 2 multiply by v square we got the value of v as 0 0.943 square of it divided by f what is f the value of f we got was uh, 1.57 so the value of f is 1.57 solve it using calculator and you will get the value of r the r we got is 1.416 and the unit of hydraulic radius in meters right this is the second thing we got now the third thing we need to find is third thing we need to find third step is to find cross section area cross sectional area which is represented with a right so for cross sectional area we had the formula a is equal to q divided by v right let me show you again if you are watching the video for first time we have discussed for cross sectional area we have formula a is equal to q divided by v q is the discharge v is the velocity we already have both values we can find the value of cross sectional area so the cross sectional area is going to be a is equal to the value of q is given to given to us 40 meter cube per second and v we already got the value of v which is 0 0.943 meter per second so the area cross-sectional area will be 
4.17 meter scale okay let's move to the fourth step the fourth step is uh, weighted parameter weighted parameter which is represented with p right so for again for weighted parameter we got a formula p is equal to 4.57 under the root discharge q so weighted parameter will be equal to 4.57 and the root q is 40 so p is going to be when you calculate it you will get 30.04 and the unit of parameter is meter okay now the next thing one more important thing is that whenever you are asked to design any canal what does that mean design means you need to find the width of the canal you need to find the depth of the canal right you need to find the slope of the canal if you got all these values that means that you have designed the canal but till now we didn't find any any of these parameters right we got different values but we still need to find the depth and breadth of the canal for that we need to look into the uh, formulas of area and parameter in by using the cross section of the uh, canal let me show you let's say this is our trapezoidal canal right so as we have discussed previously that in such cases for trapezoidal canal the we have a formula of area right area is equal to 1 upon 2 into the breadth this is b right and this is the depth we represent it y so b plus b plus 2y into d got it or not into y c here are three structures right let me draw it with line two triangles and one triangle and the side slope given to us is one ratio one right so if this is y and if your slope is one ratio one that means that this is also y and this is also y these are equal right and this is also y so we have two triangles and what in a rectangle so cross section area is some of some of the areas of these all three right so for uh, two triangles the area is going to be two into area for the triangle is two into one upon two base multiply by height right and you can sell it out the area of both the triangles will be y square right for rectangle this is this will be equal to the area of triangle now for rectangle the area will be b into y right b into y so directly you can write area is equal to cross section area is equal to y square plus by if you don't want want to write this equation when you will solve this equation and simplify it you will get this as your answer okay so this is the area
and we already got the value of a right we got the value of area here 42.417 can we put that here 42.417 is equal to y square plus by okay the, name this equation number two because equation number one we have given to one equation previously this is one equation from the area the second is from the parameter we need to uh, so the second formula we got is for parameter let's say if you want to find out the parameter by using the dimensions of this cross section what is going to be the parameter weighted parameter p is the sum of all these sides right b plus this side plus this side what is this side we need to find the length of this side so from here let's try to find out the length of this side from here to here what is the length if we got it we will add this this and this right so the triangle we got is something like this right let me draw it with lines this this and this right we need this side this is y again i am uh, repeating it that these, these both sides are y and y are equal because the slope is one ratio one that is the reason both sides are equal so we need to find this one right this is 90 can we find it yes we can because we know this side is equal to under root a, a square of base and square of height right so y square plus y square so x if this side is x then that is going to be equal to 2 y square under root right and x will be equal to under root 2 y this square will cancel with the root and only y will remain and then under root 2 so x this side is equal to so this side is equal to under root 2 y similarly this side is under root 2 y got it so now can you find out the uh, parameter yes we can we can find the weighted parameter what is going to be the parameter p weighted parameter is equal to this side plus this plus this right these three are weighted parameters the area which wets the canal is known as the weighted parameter right this one from here to here and from here to here this is our weighted parameter so the sum of this is under root 2y plus b plus under root 2y right so p is equal to 2 into under root 2y plus b am i right So we already got the value of p parameter from uh, this formula right which is 30.04 we will put this value 30.04 here in place of p 30.04 and our equation will become 2 under root 2y plus b this is equation number 3 why why we did all these calculations because from these two equations we can find the value of y and b right y and b are here in this equation 2 and in this equation 2 there is y and b so using these two equations we can find out the value of y and b because our main aim to design a canal is to find out 
the breadth of the canal, depth of the canal, and slopes of the canal, right? So, from these two equations, we can find out the uh, value of y and b, depth and breadth of the canal. So, from this equation, equation number 3, can we write it as, uh, as this one for b? Because we will put this value of b in equation number 2. For b, the equation will become b is equal to 30.04 minus 2 under root 2y, right? This is the equation for b. Let's put this equation. Put this value of b in equation number 2. When you put this value of b in equation number 2, you will get 42.417 is equal to y square plus in place of b we need to put this right 30.04 minus 2 under root 2 y in place of this b let me mark it with another color in place of this b in equation number 2 we put the value of this b okay so it it will become this multiply by y let's simplify it when you simplify this equation 42.417 is equal to y square plus multiply this y in uh, with the terms inside the bracket 30.04 y minus 2 under root 2 y square okay so there are two terms of y square sum them up we need to add them up and on further simplification you will get 42.417 is equal to 30.04 y then y square minus 2 under root 2 y square will give you 30.04 uh, when you calculate it put in into the calculator and find out the value or maybe you can uh, take y square is common common term if y square is common then remaining is 1 minus 2 under root 2 right do you ever heard about a quadratic equation quadratic equation any equation in the form of this x a x square plus b x plus c is equal to 0 this is known as quadratic equation okay this is known as quadratic equation so if any equation is in, in the form of this to find out the value of a we have formula a is equal to minus b plus minus under the root b square minus 4ac divided by 2a okay so let's try to convert this equation in the form of quadratic equation if you uh, bring this number 42.417 on the other side here will be 0 0 is equal to bring the uh, square term first uh, this is going to be 1 minus 2 under root 2 y square right plus 30.04 y then minus 42.417 now can you compare it see let me show you this term 
is with y square right and this term y and this is the constant there is no variable with this one so there are three terms and when you compare it with this quadratic, quadratic equation this term is equal to this right is equal to a this 30.04 represents b and this represents c is equal to 0 so this is in the form of quadratic equation so to find out the value of this is not a sorry this is x x so to find out the value of x in quadratic equation in this case the x is represented with y in this equation right so for our case the y value of y will be equal to this is the formula we need to apply minus b plus minus under root b square minus 4ac divided by 2a right so in our equation what is a what is b and what is c in our case a is as we i have marked it here a is equal to 1 minus 2 under root 2 right this is a what is b in our case b is 30.04 what is c c is equal to minus 42.417 the sign is minus here because as you can see in quadratic equation there is plus right but in our case it is minus so we need to consider this sign negative sign so these are the values of a b c we just need to put these values of a b c into this equation and we will get the value of y so y will be equal to minus b right what is the value of b minus 30.04 then plus minus under the root b square what is b 30.04 square then minus then 4 into a what is the value of a 1 minus 2 under root 2 and then we need to put the value of c c is minus 42.417 this is and then divide it with 2a right 2 into a what is the value of a 1 minus 2 under root 2 solve it using calculator and you will get the value of y y is equal to as here is plus and minus 2 signs right and you will get the answer two values plus minus Uh, when you solve it, you will get two values. Once, when you plus it, and then when 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 you once you need to use the sign of signature of plus and solve it, and in second case you need to use the sign of subtraction and then solve it again, and you will get two values for y. The two values you will get is. 1 is y is equal to 1.559 and a unit of y, y is depth right, depth of canal which is in meters. The other value you will get is 14.669 meters. Okay, so we got two values but we need to consider the among these two values we need to consider the small value so from these two values adopt the 
always adopt the smaller value. So the value of y, there is depth of our canal is going to be 1.59 meter. Okay. We got the value of y depth. Now what's remaining? The only thing remaining is we need to find the width of the canal, right? Which is B, capital B. So to find the value of B, we will put this value of y in up any equation, either equation number three or uh, equation number two. I think it will be easier to find the value of B from equation number three. In equation number two, there is square, so it will make things a bit more complicated. So let's put the y here in equation number three. Add a page. Okay. Now now to find width which is b width of canal put the value of y which is depth in equation number three Okay. So equation number three will become equation number three will become what was equation number three? Equation number three was B is equal to thirty point zero four minus two under root two Y, right? So put the value of y here 1.559 meter and you will get the value of b b is equal to 30.04 minus 2 under root 2 into y 1.559 meters solve it and you will get the breadth or width of your canal b is equal to 25.62 7 meters okay we got the b now the last thing remaining is slope we need to find the bed slope of the canal it is not given to us we need to find it out this is b breadth of your canal oh sorry width of your canal so the last thing we need to find is fifth bed slope or it is known as longitudinal slope right bed or longitudinal slope which is represented with s for uh, for this we got a formula longitudinal slope we have discussed in the design phase this is the formula right s is equal to f raised to the power 5 upon 3 divided by 3340 multiplied by flow and the power over the flow is 1 upon 6. We will use this formula to find out the bed slope. So let's write down the formula. The formula is for side slope, uh, bed slope, sorry, it's not side slope, it's bed slope. Bed slope or longitudinal slope is equal to f raised to the power 5 by 3 divided by 3340 q raised to the power 1 by 6 but the values we already have the values of f and q f is the uh, shield factor right we found the way uh, we already got the value of f 1.57 raised to the power 5 by 3 and then divided by 3340 into q flow is given to us which is 40 and 1 by 6 so s is going to be equal to 1 divided by 2912 so what is the slope the slope will be 1 ratio 2912 
bed flow will be equal to this got it so we got the value of slope too now our design is done let's highlight the values which we got the first thing we got was velocity right which was this and then we got hydraulic radius 1.146 meters and then we got cross sectional area cross sectional area was 42.417 meters meter square sorry and then we got weighted parameter the weighted parameter was 30.04 meter after that we uh, did different calculations to find out the values of b and depth right y so for that we use the cross sectional area of the trapezoidal section and parameter weighted parameter of the trapezoidal section and we got the values of uh, b and y are after solving after doing all this calculation the y was this depth of the slab a uh, depth of the sorry uh, canal and breadth of the canal is this and then side slope is this so our design is done let's draw the canal and let's see what our design says what should be our canal look like so we have designed a canal which has a capacity to take q discharge of 40 meter cube per second right so the values we got all those dimensions are good enough to carry 40 meter cube of this charge through this canal so what is going to be the depth sorry uh, width width of the canal we find it already and then we found the depth of the canal which is y and then we found the the side slope is already given to us side slope is already given to us and we found this uh, bed slope right and then we got this bed slope which is equal to s which was one ratio 2912 one ratio 2912 and what is the value of b width of the canal we got was what is the width of the canal 25.625 25.625 width should be 25.625 meters let me write them in text 25.625 b width is equal to 25.625 meters and what is going to be the depth depth is equal to we already find the value of depth this is 1.559 1.559 and meters right and bed slope let me write it in text to bed slope 2912 so the bed slope bed or longitudinal slope is equal to s is equal to one ratio one ratio two nine one to right sorry two nine what was it 2912 right 2912 and this is already given to us one ratio 
one. Okay, anything else? That's it. So to carry a 40 meter cube per second discharge, our canal should be 1.559 meter wide and 25.625 meter wide and its bed slope should be 1 ratio 2912. If you follow these parameters, then the canal can carry 40 meter cube per second of discharge. And its side slope is 1 ratio 1, it's already given to us. So can you compare this with the Kennedy's uh, theory? For Kennedy's theory, we have also designed the canal for 40 meter cube per second, right? But the dimensions there were different. Here the depth is 1.559 meter and breadth is 25.62, right? But in case of Kennedy, let's check it out. Uh, let me check it out here and I will tell you the comparison what were the values when we designed this by using Kennedy's theory okay uh, let me choose another color okay for similar this charge of 40 meter cube per second 40 meter cube per second by using Kennedy's theory we got what we got we got the values of we got the values B breadth as 15.401 meter and we got Y depth as 2.65 meters okay and we got bed slope as 1 ratio 4 for that so you can see the difference you can clearly see the difference for the same discharge the values are far different from each other these are the values using Kennedy's theory for the same discharge of 40 meter cube but using Lessie's theory we got different dimensions for the same discharge but the small difference was that in this case the side slope is 1 ratio 1 but in this case the numerical we did previously for Kennedy's theory the side slope was 1 ratio 1.5 sorry 0 0.5 1 ratio uh, this that was 1 by 2 ratio 1 okay and this bed slope was already given to us in that equation this this is the only difference otherwise the flow was same okay so that's it we have designed the canal for 40 meter cube per second of a uh, resigned canal using the glasses theory so our depth of canal is this our width of canal is this and bed slope of canal is this. That's it. We are done with the Lessie's theory. So both Lessie's theory, again I am repeating it that both Kennedy's and Lessie's theories are used for designing of alluvial canals but alluvial canals are unlined canals right so we cannot use these methods 
to design lined canals so we cannot use these theories to design lined canals okay so this is the point you need to remember these are just for the designing of unlined canals alluvial canals right so now for line canals for line canal in next lecture we will start start the designing of line canal okay as we have defined line canals are those canals whose side slope whose sides and bed right side and bed are covered with some uh, material which doesn't erode the sides and bed of the canal like concrete or stones or we use tiles or boulders okay so that's it for today in next video we will start the designing of lined canals so till next video goodbye see you guys